We worked on a small nematode worm called C. elegans. It's an incredibly simple organism. It grows from an egg to an adult in three days. It's transparent and it only has a thousand cells in its whole body. We can follow every cell division from the one cell stage to the adult stage and we can then easily see what goes wrong in a mutant. This was the first animal to have all of its DNA sequenced and that was done in 1998. The same year, a new technique called RNA interference was discovered. And this is a very simple way to turn genes off. Having the whole genome sequence and the technique of RNA interference, we thought we could use this to turn every gene in the worm genome off one by one. We can do this very easily in worms by engineering bacteria to express a particular double-stranded RNA, and then we can feed that bacteria to worms, and that will turn the gene off in the worm and tell us what the gene does. We made a bacterial library of 17,000 bacterial strains and we fed them to worms one by one and then we asked what happened to the organism when the gene was turned off. And that was the first time anyone was able to ask this question in an animal. Our RNAi library is being used by scientists all over the world to understand genes involved in human disease and normal development, for example, how we age or how cells divide or how the DNA is repaired when it's mutated. The work that we're doing now at the Gurdon Institute in my lab is to try and understand the control of gene expression, which is how genes are turned on or off. In the nucleus, DNA is wound around nucleosomes to make chromatin. Activating chromatin proteins turn genes on by binding to the gene's DNA. To turn a gene off, different proteins bind, often making the packaging tighter. To make different cell types, different regions of DNA are bound by the activating or inactivating proteins resulting in different sets of genes being expressed. Human disorders, such as cancer, can be caused by defects in chromatin proteins. Because the worm genes are so similar to the human genes, the work that we do on C. elegans genes can help us understand these human disorders.